For a long time, I used Ulysses for all of my creative writing projects, but it always kind of bothered me that it didn't support standard markdown formatting for images, and with the switch to a subscription pricing model a few years back, I decided to try moving all of my creative writing projects into Obsidian. And while I liked having all my projects as individual text files, there were several features that I was missing from the Ulysses writing interface. So through a lot of experimenting while using Obsidian every single day for all of my writing projects, I slowly figured out how to add back just about every feature that I was missing from Ulysses. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it by using a combination of settings and plugins to turn Obsidian into the ultimate writing app. First, let's consider the settings. This is the place to start with every app, and Obsidian is no exception because there's often some gold nuggets to be mined here. With Obsidian, there are a few specific settings here, which in my opinion, make it function much better as a text editor. So to start, click the gear icon in the lower left to access the Obsidian settings, and then click on the editor option from the settings sidebar. Now, most of these default editor settings are actually pretty good, but there are a couple that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you set properly if you're going to use Obsidian for your creative writing projects. First, make sure that default editing mode is set to live preview. This is the default now, but you wanna make sure this is correct because this will render the markdown formatting for you as you type so it's easier to read, but it will still let you see the actual code when you select it. And this is the best option I feel for writing in Obsidian, as you have full access to the markdown code if you need it, but it also provides a much cleaner writing environment than a lot of other plain text editors by hiding it until you do. Next, make sure that auto pair markdown syntax is toggled on. This creates both the opening and the closing markdown symbols at the same time when you're writing. For example, if you create one asterisk character with this option toggled on, Obsidian will automatically create the other one, and it will place your cursor between them so you can just type the word you want to italicize. By the way, if you're new to Markdown, check out my Obsidian University Starter Vault as it contains a Markdown reference document which shows you all of the available Markdown text formatting options that you can use while you're writing in Obsidian. Next, make sure that Smart Indent Lists is toggled on. This makes it easier to create bulleted and numbered lists quickly by automatically adding the next bullet right below the current one whenever you're on a line with a bullet and you hit the return key. In the case of ordered lists, the next bullet will auto increment to the next number in the series. So for example, if you're on bullet number one and you hit enter with this option toggled on, Obsidian will automatically create the next bullet right below and the number two. Also make sure that fold heading and fold indent are both toggled on. This creates carrots for markdown headers as well as indented text that you can use to hide sections, making Obsidian function more like an outliner and enabling you to fold sections of your text so that they're not visible in the editor window and you can focus on the text that you are currently writing. Now there are a bunch of other settings you can customize here, but many of them are simply personal preference. These are the real important ones if you're going to use Obsidian for your creative writing projects. All right, so once you have these settings dialed in, it's time to move on to the plugins. And there are two types of plugins in Obsidian. Core plugins that ship with the app and community plugins, which are made by others that you can install to extend the functionality of Obsidian. Let's look at the core plugins first. First, make sure that the backlinks and outgoing links core plugins are both toggled on. These are usually on by default and they're visible in the right sidebar, but it's important that you have these enabled as they're gonna show you all of the notes that link to the active note or are linked to from the active note respectively. This is the killer feature in Obsidian for a lot of people and I find this really helpful when piecing together larger writing projects, so I recommend that you make sure that these are in fact enabled. Also make sure that the outline core plugin is toggled on. This adds a tab, usually in the right sidebar, that creates a table of contents for your note and lets you jump between sections of your note by clicking on the headers. This is really helpful when you're working on a longer writing project and you have a lot of text inside of a single note, as it gives you a quick way to jump to a specific section of your note simply by clicking on the appropriate header title. Lastly, make sure to turn the word count setting off. Now word counts are important and we will be using these with our writing projects, but there's a community plugin that does a much better job of this than the built-in word count tool. And if you leave this on, you're gonna see multiple word counts in the status bar. So make sure to toggle this off to avoid duplicating that information. Again, there's a bunch of other options here that are largely personal preference, but these are the important ones. Now, once you have these core plugins dialed in, you can really turn Obsidian into an incredibly powerful writing app by using some specific 
Community Plugins. The first plugin you'll want to use is called Better Word Count. This plugin replaces the built-in Word Count Core plugin and it functions largely the same with one key addition. When you highlight a section of text, it shows the number of words or characters in the selection instead of the whole document. So if you want to see how many words or characters are in a section of your writing, just select it and the count in the status bar will instantly update. The next plugin I recommend is the Reading Time plugin. This tells you how long it will take to read the active note in the status bar. For a lot of the articles that I write and even the video scripts like this one, this is important information and it's handy to get an estimate for how long a piece of content will take to read or watch. You can start using this one right away by just installing it and turning it on, but you can also customize your reading speed in the settings for the plugin. The next plugin I recommend is the Obsidian Footnotes plugin. And this makes dealing with footnotes much easier than it is using the standard markdown formatting by hand. Once you install and enable this plugin, you can trigger it in the command palette by selecting the command footnote shortcut, insert and navigate footnote. This will insert the appropriate markdown at the place of your cursor and then immediately navigate you to the bottom of your note where you can insert the text for your footnote. Pro tip here, I recommend also setting this to a custom hotkey, which you can do by going to the Obsidian settings, choosing the hotkey section, and then searching for footnote. This allows you to trigger this by using a keyboard hotkey instead of selecting it from the command palette, which will save you some time if you're gonna use a lot of footnotes. The next plugin I recommend is the Pro Zen plugin. This allows you to remove all the distractions and focus only on what you're writing. When this is active, this plugin hides everything but the active note so you can focus on the text that you're writing. There's another plugin here that I've used for a long time called Focus Mode that does a simpler version of the same thing, but it hasn't been updated in a long time and I started to notice some of the features of that plugin were breaking with Obsidian updates. But if you don't like the Pro Zen plugin, there are several different plugins that offer different implementations of that same Focus Mode feature. ProZen just happens to be my favorite. It's simple, it's effective. The animation when you trigger it both looks really nice and serves as a context trigger to help you focus on what you're writing. The next plugin I recommend is called Writing Goals. This plugin is really powerful and allows you to add Ulysses style writing goals to your notes or folders. Just right click on the note or the folder in the file explorer and select add writing goal from the contextual menu that appears. Once you set your goal, a word goal property gets added to your note and you can view your progress either in the circle to the right of the note title in the file explorer or in the right sidebar. Once you hit your writing goal, the color of the progress circle changes to green to show you that you've met your goal. You can also view all your writing goals at once via the command palette and you can set sprint goals where you set a timer for a session to complete your writing goal by. The last plugin recommendation I have for you is called Typewriter Scroll. And this one keeps the active line in the middle of the screen as you type. The focus will move from the current line to the next by moving the rest of the page in the background much like an old fashioned typewriter. There's also a Zen mode that grays out the background text to help you focus on the section that you're currently writing. Now these two settings function independently so if you want you can turn Zen mode on so that the current line is highlighted without having the option of keeping that line in the middle of the page. And while typewriter scroll hasn't been updated in a while, it functions just fine. But if you just wanna focus on the currently selected section without the ability to anchor the active line in the middle of your screen, there is a separate plugin called Still that does just this and has been updated more recently. So there you have it. Those are the key settings and plugins that you need to turn Obsidian into the ultimate writing app. Now, if you want more Obsidian tips, templates, and resources, you should download my free Obsidian University Starter Vault at obsidianuniversity.com vault. The Obsidian University Starter Vault includes a bunch of templates, tips, and additional resources to help you make more of your notes and ideas in Obsidian. Once again, you can download that Starter Vault for free by going to obsidianuniversity.com vault.